Hi everyone, I'm so glad that you could join me today. I'm Heidi Cundin, owner and creative director of happinessishomemade.com. We have lots and lots of fun craft project tutorials and free files at Happiness is Homemade, so be sure to hop on over there after class and check it all out. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make awesome sublimation projects without a sublimation printer. No printer? No problem. If you don't have a sublimation printer, you can still create tons of incredible projects using pre-printed ink sheets. Pre-printed ink sheets are available in lots of different patterns and solid color options from a variety of sellers, including Heat Transfer Warehouse, Etsy, and my personal favorite, Bright Star Crafters. You may have also heard of Cricut Infusible Ink before, and that's essentially what Infusible Ink is. It's a sheet of sublimation ink that's been pre-printed and placed onto a plastic carrier sheet so that it can be cut with a Cricut machine, but you don't have to use a Cricut machine with it. You can use infusible ink and other pre-printed ink sheets whole as is, or you can cut them down to size and shape using scissors or an X-Acto knife. Today, I'll be using both pre-printed ink sheets from Bright Star Crafters as well as infusible ink sheets so that you can see how each of them work and how they differ just a little bit from one another. Are you ready? Let's get started. First, let's talk about this ink sheet for a minute. This is a patterned sublimation sheet from Bright Star Crafters. It's just under 12 inches square and it's about the weight of a piece of copy paper. They sell these on their website for just under $3 a sheet and they also offer quantity discounts if you purchase multiples of the same sheet. My favorite thing about these sheets from Bright Star Crafters is that not only are they available in hundreds of colors and patterns, they're also customizable so you can choose your favorite patterns and then have them printed in your favorite color combinations. If you're familiar with the sublimation process, then you probably already know that the muted colors that you see on the sheet here are not the colors that are going to appear on your final project. These colors are going to turn far more vibrant once they've been exposed to both heat and pressure. For this first project, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use this sublimation ink sheet as is. I'm starting with a blank white 20 ounce sublimation tumbler. This one here has a little bit of a glittery shimmer to the base and you're going to see that sparkle come through once we apply the ink as well. I'm going to use this sublimation ink sheet here just like it is, but I do want to trim it down to size though, so I'm going to use my paper trimmer to cut it down so that it's just a little bit taller than my tumbler. Now before I wrap this ink sheet around the tumbler, I'm going to prep the tumbler. Any dust, lint, or oils can cause the ink to transfer improperly. So first, I'm going to wipe it down with a lint-free cloth, and then I'm going to use a lint roller just in case to remove anything else that might still be on there. So now that the tumbler is clean and the ink sheet is the right size, it's time to wrap it up. Tightly wrap the ink sheet around the tumbler, but do not tape the sheet directly to the tumbler. If you tape it down on this bottom edge there, that tape is going to resist the ink transfer and you're going to end up with a tape sized white spot on your tumbler. So wrap it tightly and then tape it along the overlapping edges. Then where it's a little longer on the edges here, we're going to bend that over and tape that down also. If yours is too long to bend over nicely, you can use scissors to snip some tiny little slits in there and then wrap that over. Once the design is wrapped and taped, I wrap everything in a layer of butcher paper so that none of the ink accidentally transfers through the sheet and onto my heat press. So now that everything is wrapped and taped, it's time to press. I'm going to be using my tumbler press here, but you could also make this project in a convection oven too. I've seen some videos where people have successfully made these uh, straight sided 20 ounce tumblers in their Cricut mug press too, but I haven't actually tried that myself since I do have a tumbler press. My press is set at 400 degrees and 60 seconds, and I'm just going to carefully place this into the press, close it, and let it press for 60 seconds. Since this is a full wrap that goes around the entire tumbler, my press actually has a small space here at the top where it doesn't fully close all the way around it, so I'm going to rotate the tumbler around to the opposite side, and then I'm going to press it one more time. Make sure that you're always wearing heat protectant gloves during this process because these metal elements get extremely hot. Once it's done pressing, I remove the tumbler and set it aside on a heat protectant mat until it's just warm to the touch. 
When it's cooled down a bit, go ahead and peel off the layers of paper and tape to reveal your design. Look at how much brighter that ink has turned now that it's been pressed. And you can see that sparkle from the glitter coming through also. So pretty! All we really did to make this project was to wrap the paper around the tumbler and it turned out looking like this. I'd say that's pretty impressive and definitely easy peasy. There are a ton of projects you can make using pre-printed ink sheets as is, but that's just the beginning. Let me show you some different things that we can make when you use scissors or an X-Acto knife to cut your ink into basic shapes. So here I've printed out two copies of a heart template. You can get this same template in the class files for this workshop. I'm going to use one of these as a cutting guide and one as a positioning template. Using scissors, I'm going to cut out one of the triangles to use as a cutting template. And then I'm going to place that triangle on top of my pre-printed sublimation ink sheet and I'm going to start cutting some triangle shapes out of it. Now, in the interest of time, I've gone ahead and already cut out the rest of these triangles already. I'm going to take a sheet of clear transfer paper. This here is also from Bright Star Crafters, and I'm going to place that second template underneath the transfer paper. Then, I'm going to take the triangles and place them onto the transfer paper in the template design. Now, I'm not going for any particular pattern here, I'm just mixing up the colors. Make sure to line up all the pieces side by side as closely as possible so that you don't end up with any white lines between your triangles. Unless you want it that way, of course, you could definitely do it that way also for another look. You could press this design onto any kind of sublimation blank that it would fit on. A mouse pad, a kitchen towel, even a puzzle. But I'm going to go ahead and press it onto a t-shirt here. Just like we prepped the tumbler before, we're going to need to prep the shirt also. First, I'm placing a sheet of cardstock inside of the shirt so that none of this ink will seep through to the back side. And then I'm going to use a lint roller to remove any lint or debris. Make sure to really go over the entire shirt a couple of times because those little lint fuzzies have a tendency to pick up ink during heating and that can transfer random little spots of ink to your shirt. I preheated my Easy Press to 400 degrees and the timer is set for 60 seconds. You could also use a traditional heat press for this project, but mine takes a little while to heat up. So when I'm just making a couple of quick projects like this, I still usually reach for my Easy Press since it's just so easy. Now I'm going to press the shirt for 15 seconds to remove any residual moisture that may be in there. I'm going to use my t-shirt ruler to position the design on the shirt. You can get the file to make your own ruler in my shop. I cut this one here out of acrylic with my Glowforge laser, but the file also comes with a PDF that you can simply print and cut out. Once the design is in place, I'm going to cover it with a sheet of butcher paper, again to protect my heating element, and then I'm going to press it with the Easy Press for 60 seconds. If you're using an Easy Press, try to keep it as still as possible when you're pressing. It can feel a little slippery on top of the butcher paper, and any motion can run the risk of ghosting the ink and leaving that faint halo of color outside of the lines and edges of the design. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and let it cool a little bit to the touch before peeling everything off to reveal the design. Look at how cute that is! And because this is sublimation, the ink has actually become part of the shirt, so you can stretch this and there won't ever be any cracking, peeling, or fading. If you're looking to sell items that you create, sublimation definitely produces the most professional quality results. Okay, now I know that I mentioned that there was no Cricut machine required, but I just want to show you a couple of really cool things that you can do with these ink sheets if you do have a Cricut machine. This shirt here was made using two different types of infusible ink, and you can see that the Cricut machine allows you to create really precise cuts so that everything fits together perfectly. For this project here, I actually did utilize having a little bit of white space between the different colors of ink, and that just helps provide a bit more contrast between the patterned heart and the text. But really, it's just a matter of personal preference. 
On this one here, I used the same concept, but I placed the heart and the text directly side by side, and you can see that the layers fit together perfectly like puzzle pieces. Now, if you have a steady hand, you might be able to create the same look using templates and an X-Acto knife, but it's definitely gonna take you a bit longer. These mugs here were also made by cutting a patterned sheet of infusible ink with my Cricut machine, and they show off one of my favorite techniques, using both the positive and negative pieces of a design so that there's virtually no waste. Let's take a closer look at how that works. I'm gonna be using my Cricut Maker 3 and a sheet of Cricut infusible ink for this demo, just to show you how it works, but the design I'm making is simple enough that you could also create this project using my template and an X-Acto knife. Begin by uploading the SVG file into Cricut Design Space. You'll notice that it includes the design layer as well as a background layer that will help you adhere your design onto the mug. I wanna cut both of these layers at the same time, so I'm gonna select both of them and use the attach tool to make them one layer. Make sure that everything is sized appropriately and then click on the green Make It button. Now usually when you're working with infusible ink or any pre-printed ink sheet, you're gonna wanna mirror your design so that it comes out right side up on your project. But since this design is pretty symmetrical, it's not totally necessary. Choose infusible ink from the material selection list and select the appropriate pressure. I typically like to use more pressure when I'm working with infusible ink. Place your sheet of infusible ink on the cutting mat. You'll see here that the infusible ink is already backed with a plastic transfer sheet, so there's no need to use a separate transfer sheet like we did with the other ink. You'll also see that infusible ink is quite a bit thicker than the other sublimation ink sheets that I was using earlier. Load the cutting mat into the Cricut machine and press the button to begin the cutting process. After you remove the ink sheet from the mat, you'll be left with a piece that looks like this. If you look closely, you'll see that there are pieces cut at each side of the rectangle and also the hearts that are cut out of the center. Because the rectangle is one large solid piece, I'm gonna remove it from the transfer sheet first. That way, the individual hearts will remain on the plastic sheet in their proper place and I don't have to worry about positioning them by hand one at a time. As I mentioned earlier, infusible ink is a thicker material, so you'll wanna roll the design back and forth a little bit to separate the pieces and make it easier to weed. Remove the rectangle piece and set it aside, and then also remove the two smaller pieces at either edge. We won't be using these smaller pieces for this project, so you can set them aside and save them for a scrap buster project at a later date. Now again, we wanna prep the mug before we wrap it with the ink, so I'm gonna go over this with a lint-free cloth and then a lint roller. Carefully center and position the design onto the mug and use additional tape as needed to hold everything in place. I'm gonna be using my Cricut mug press to make these mugs, so I have the press preheated, but the really nice thing about the mug press is that there are no settings to set. You simply turn it on to preheat it and the mug press will automatically press the mug for the proper amount of time, depending on several different environmental factors. Wrap the mug in a layer of butcher paper, again, just to protect the heating element from any air and ink transfer. So now all I have to do is take this wrapped mug and place it into the machine, try to keep the handle in the center of the opening there, and press down on the lever to close the press. It typically takes about six to seven minutes to press a mug, so I'm gonna go ahead and prep and clean my second mug while the first one is pressing. When the machine beeps, lift the lever, remove the mug, and set it aside to cool, but be careful, it's gonna be very hot. When the mug is warm to the touch, unwrap the layers to reveal the design, but don't throw away the transfer sheet. We're gonna go ahead and reuse that transfer sheet for our second mug. This turned out so cute. Now, let's make its other half. Take the plastic transfer sheet and remove and discard the used heart pieces. Place the rectangle sheet onto the transfer tape. 
This one lines up pretty easily, but if you look closely, you'll be able to see the lines in the plastic so that you can line it up exactly where it needs to be. Wrap the design tightly around the mug and use tape to secure everything in place. Wrap it with a layer of butcher paper and place the mug into the mug press. Let it cool down, unwrap, and look at that! Such a cute set of mugs! Using the negative pieces of a design is a great way to minimize waste and make the most of each ink sheet. There are so many things that you can make and do with pre-printed sublimation ink sheets and infusible ink. The possibilities really are endless. For even more sublimation ideas, SVG files, and craft tutorials, be sure to visit us at happinessishomemade.com and give us a follow on Instagram and our other social media channels.